This is the Besotted Pride of West London podcast. And as you can tell by my delivery, I'm feeling rather relaxed. I had a couple of weeks off from Premier League football, which was getting a little bit frantic, you know, with this sort of kind of near to the bottom of the table malarkey that's going down. Personally, I just thought a little break from the football is going to do me, myself, and probably all Brentford fans a lot of good and it has and as you can tell i am now very relaxed sitting here in the virtual joint with laney who is also very relaxed aren't you laney how are you i'm good thank you very much bill yeah it's uh as you said it's uh burnley seems quite a long time ago now and we're, we're going to talk about that it was a calamitous afternoon um and but you know it seems like you know it came at the right time you know a few positives we talk about this you know Ivan playing for England and scoring um, and he, we, we know now that it's going to be a nine game season rather than a nine month season and we know what we really need to do to make sure that we uh, keep our heads above water and uh, retain our place in the top flight for next season but do we? I mean, do we know exactly what we need to do? I mean, what do I mean? Does Thomas Frank know exactly what we need? Um, what exactly do we need, Laney? Well, we need to get more points than the teams below us. That's that's what we need to do. But we we need to you know we need to win two or three games, don't we? And um, uh, that's, 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 that's about two out of or nine. three games. Now we, we need to you know we don't know. Okay, exactly. Maybe we don't know be, exactly what we need, do we? We kind of do, really. Yeah, we, we we know we we know what we're up against. We know we know literally that we're top of a of a of a bottom bottom sort of six, um, and we need to just make sure that we we stay above um, sort of those below us. It's, it's, it is quite it's pretty simple. We just have to do better than um, everyone else below us, and, and and not really worry about anything other than that. You know, we haven't got cups to worry about. We haven't got we haven't got transfer deadlines to to to, to worry about. We're not going to lose any more players. We've actually got players coming back. You know, Brian and Bumo came back against Burnley and he was, you know, a huge shot in the arm. Uh we've got Brian and Bumo and Ivan Tony, our, our our you know our our dream team top two um to to hopefully fire us goals that we need and we've got we're playing we're playing sort of you know three of those below us as well so we have to we have to you know get at least a point if not win all of those as well so yeah we just have to focus on on these nine games really the rest of it you know what's gone before is is going to be just a distraction now it's you know we obviously we all wish we weren't in this position but if we're going to be in this position at, at, you know at least we're at the head of the pack rather than you know l- looking to catch points up or having points deductions ourselves we've got all of that to talk about it's uh it's it's a, it's a lot messier behind us than it is um in the brentford camp at the moment yeah and and part of the reason why you know if we don't know exactly what we need is because um you know we've got the forest situation and the everton situation where there's been point deductions but then you don't know how many more point deductions there may be or there might not be or what's going to go on and what position they're going to be or not be or if there's going to be appeals and whether or not they're going to get the points back that's deducted after the end of the season and all sorts of stuff so i think part of the, the thing here and we're going to maybe talk we might talk about that a little bit later is that you just got to concentrate on your own game i mean i've always turned around and said like let's just forget about forest whatever point deduction they get is is not by the by. I mean, a lot, I know a lot of people start to get really upset going, oh no, they didn't get enough point deductions. They should have got more. We shouldn't be relying on other teams getting point deductions. We should be doing our own thing and getting ourselves out of peril as us, as as, as it is. So forget about Nottingham Forest for now. Um, I kind of agree. Of, I kind yeah. of agree, but I kind of, you know, I, what I, what I'm getting, not angry is the wrong word, but what I'm getting kind of like was scratching my head about is, the, the narrative seems to be all about Everton and, and Forest fans and their clubs not being happy about the punishment for. A, they've admitted that they've you know they've breached rules. We call it cheating. Um, you know they've they've spent more money than they were allowed to in a in in a, in the same time period that other clubs have stuck by the rules and and and, and haven't cheated. They've cheated. We haven't cheated. The narrative should be more about how we feel about, you know, them breaching the rules and, and seeking an unfair advantage. I mean, what what is quite humorous is the fact that they've spent more money than they should have done, but they're they're right at the bom- bottom of the league. They're they're struggling to to survive still. Um, so they haven't they haven't spent more money very wisely. Um, so, but you know, from a from a Brentford fans' point of view, from a 
Crystal Palace fans, you know, Bournemouth, Fulham, you know, Luton especially, and, and Burnley and, and Sheffield United. They haven't cheated, um, and they they could be going down. We could be going down, um, depending on the points and what happens for the rest of the season, because they cheated. And I, I just think that. Yeah, you're right. We shouldn't be relying on 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 the misdemeanors and the kind of misfortunes elsewhere in the league. We should just sort ourselves out, and I, I still firmly believe we will do that. But it, it, I, I don't think it's it seems it's not right that um, our situation isn't clear because theirs isn't. You know, we we should have clarity now that you know we've we sh- we should be just confident in the. The, 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 the fines and the or the fines or the, the points punishment is going to be sufficient to, 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 to serve as a deterrent and actually be a punishment. You know, they, they actually need to pay for, for what they've done. So, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, obviously, I've had quite a few protracted conversations with my Nottingham Forest chums because, you know, I've got chums in Nottingham Forest. And uh, it's interesting. They, uh, they accused um, me, stroke our club, of being um, Timpot small, or small time. Um, it's, it's always going to be a small club or small thinking club is what they said. And the, why, why is the reason? Because they said, because you stuck within the rules, right? And they said to me, look, you're, you're never going to compete against the top six if you continue to just kind of stick within the rules, right? Um, um, and, and so when my argument, I said to them, well, to be fair, you know, everyone sort of said to us when we were in the championship, you know, unless you actually spend lots of money and sell your stadium like Derby County and Sheffield Wednesday and all these teams did, you're never going to go up. And uh, then we went up uh, against the against the odds and completely confused everyone. So, of course, their argument then after that is like, oh, look at you, good old Brentford, sticking within the rules. Oh, aren't you so good? So it's almost like there's this really weird mentality um, that y- you have to basically you have to you have to break the rules. It doesn't matter about. Uh, I mean, I thought like Gary Neville's arguments actually quite interesting. He's like, you know, if you, um, um, we're talking about um, the um, basically Gary Neville we're, he, on his fan show, okay, um, uh, and he was talking to Greg from Forza Garibaldi, and uh, on the overlap, okay, check it out. It's on YouTube now. It's really interesting. The last hour, check out from you know an hour in for the last half an hour and he was chatting to Greg um, quite a lot and then he had also Luton and Everton fan there as well and he was basically saying look you know the rules are the rules right these are the rules and uh, do you want to you know at the end of the day you basically just got out and broken them he goes do you think that's okay um, and Greg turned around and said well I do think it's okay that we've broken the rules because um, we survived because we, we needed to break the rules because we, we didn't have enough we didn't have any, didn't have any players um, now the it, 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 Gary's level was just going so you would rather a club that you keep on talking about which got this great history and it's this great traditional club was quite happy to go and stick two fingers up at you know the, the, at, at the football league the football the FA everything that football is all about and also all the other clubs around you to turn around and say we don't care about you as long as we're okay and we survive we will do anything we can do to get where we are and I think that kind of sums up where, think, where, 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 where we are um Chelsea and Man City, yeah, that's a different story altogether. But I think the problem is that when you start throwing those arguments into the pot, right, it starts to cloud the argument because at the end of the day, yeah, they've done what they're going to do and I'm sure they're going to get fined or whatever's going to happen to them. But that's not the point. The point is that there's still a number of other clubs around um, where Nottingham Forest, because Nottingham Forest are nowhere near Chelsea. They're nowhere near Man City. They're nearer to us. They're nearer to Bournemouth. They're nearer to Sheffield United. And... None of those clubs are going around and cheating to try and see they can get out of it. So why are Nottingham Forest any different? Why do they think that they can go around and break the rules? And at the moment now, their narrative is like, we should all be joining together. So I can see them and Everton fans are joining together saying, we've both been done. We're both in this together. You know, let's 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 let us go. Let let us fight against the top six and let all the fans come together from the, the, the other 14. Let's fight the top six. I'm sitting there thinking, well, this is quite interesting, but... You know, the fight in the top six thing, you know, I'm cool there. But the fact is that you still cheated. And at the end of the day, is that if you stay up and Luton go down, how, how right is that? And interestingly, you've got the Everton fan and the Nottingham Forest fan on the same show. And they're sort of saying, yeah, we were stuck together. You know, we're, we're brothers in arms and this, that, the other. And then the Everton fan turns around and goes, but, but you got a two-point reduction in, your, in, 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 in how many points you got. So... If, if you stay up and we don't go down, I'm not very happy about that. So why well, I'm against you. So 
at the end of the day, there's a really weird situation happening. And to me, I think it's very typical of football where a lot of football clubs don't run like real businesses. They just kind of run like cloud cuckoo land. And then a lot of fans just buy into this nonsense of just kind of basically just kind of like, let's just live in this world that doesn't really exist where you can do what you want to, buy whatever players you want to. You could just, you know, just run up ridiculous debts and everything like that. And uh, and, and I, I just think it's a load of nonsense myself, Laney. Yeah, no, it's complete nonsense. You, you certainly don't want to go into, uh, you know, collaboration with, you know, a, a, a collection of cheats. You know, it's like band of, you know, band of thieves. It's, 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 it's they, they've already admitted that they'll, they'll break the rules and they'll do whatever they feel they feel is necessary to, uh, to, 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 to better their own football clubs. You know, you, you can't. Everyone's pitted against each other. I mean, and that's why that's why the, the game's so great. But you know, you, you, the, all the clubs, whether whether the FFP rules are, are fit and proper or fit for purpose, is is a kind of regardless. But everyone everyone signed up to them, and so everyone sticks to the same rules. And if you and if you break the rules, then you expect to get punished. It, you know, that that shouldn't be an over simplistic way of looking at it. If the if the rules are there, then you stick to them. Um, or you renegotiate uh, and you, you get the rules changed. But every club who accepts the place in the Premier League um, agrees to a code of conduct, as it were. And if you break that code of conduct, it's, it's, a, it's an offence against everyone else. Um, and I, 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 you know, I hear the, the whataboutery and the kind of like, it's not fair. Um, and, you know, it's, it's the Premier League is corrupt. But it's, it's not. It's just bad management or or, in, or intentionally corrupt management by the clubs that have been cited mm. and mm. you know i just have to go you know they have to be if you if you if you if you break the rules you have to be punished otherwise you're taking the piss out of everyone that's playing by the rules yeah and and and, and, and just just interestingly just coming back to the point about forest saying that they, you know, oh, we didn't have enough, you know, when we went out, we had loads of loan players, so we lost our players, so we, we had to go and buy players. Listen, the reality is, right, if you ain't ready to go up, you know, I mean, last season, how many times on, my, on this podcast did I turn around and say to you, I didn't want to go in the Europa League. I don't think we're ready to go in the Europa League. I don't think we're, not Europa, but the, the, the Europa, whatever it is. Yeah, I said, we're not, we're not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready. We're not ready to go there. Maybe two or three or four years, because at the end of the day, it's about building and about building at a sustainable rate. Right. And I didn't think that we would, if we went in, we'd be building at a sustainable rate. Now, the fact is that if Nottingham Forest were in the championship, right, and all of a sudden they came from being the bottom, really great to be up there, uh, up the top, and they've gone up there and they got promoted, right, that's fine for them. But the fact is that if they realise that they haven't got the infrastructure really there to maintain that, they've got themselves 150 million, go back down again, take that money and rebuild, and then you go back like what other people do. Why do they have to feel that they come in the Premier League and before you know it, they've got to be competing with the top six or the top eight? That's just not how it works. If if they went up, fair play to them. But if they ain't ready, like, you know, we went up and we had, you know, as we call it, Premier League ready, who was ready to fight and be able to maintain our position in the first year of the Premier League. If the Forest weren't ready to do that, but they've gone up, just accept it. Just go back down again and reform. And that's that's kind of how it works. But it's this whole football mentality about there you go. Oh, we need to get it all tomorrow because we're just the best things in the world. And just stick two fingers up at the kind of the system. I just think that's just kind of it's, it's a bit sad, really. And um, and and I think it's a real lack of kind of vision as to kind of how how business works as a whole and how 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 you how you should be sort of kind of running or how your club should be run i mean how can you turn around and say to you you're really proud that basically you've gone out and sort of kind of in effect cheated possibly southampton or even dare i say it leeds united out of a, out of a place in the premier league last season because you weren't running your club well because the argument is if you didn't go out and spend all that money, you wouldn't have had all them players. So you would have probably um, got four points less than you would have done and got relegated last season. But you doing that has basically cheated somebody out of else out of 150 million. Now, is that is that is that a right thing, Laney? I don't know. I mean, I mean, I, mean, I do know. I, I think it's completely wrong. But I mean, what do you think? Well, I mean, I I, I watched the um, the Gary Neville Carragher um, overlap uh, thing as well, and I, I really I really enjoyed 
um, the conversation. And I thought what Gary Neville, um, Red Nev said was was really interesting. You know, he, he cited that Maranakis, the the owner of Nottingham Forest, you know, his behaviour at the end of the you know Liverpool game where we lost um, right at the end of the game, he was down, almost pitch invading, intimidating um, the officials. The fact that they you know they've they've hired Mark Clattenburg, um, former referee, to to kind of in brackets advise, but probably more like influence um, the, 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 the 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 referees um, and, and advise the players. And you've you've got you know the players players kicking off, and um, it, it's it's kind of it's 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 a it's, it's chaos down there. And you know you add that to the the the, the amount of players that they they brought. During in a build-up to and during that first season in the Premier League, everyone everyone was going. This can't be right. This, this you know whether we you know yeah they needed to strengthen their team, but as you rightly said, you know to to what level to to survive, um, and it, it, just, it just again it's just it's just that in, the inju- injustice of it all. You know Burnley haven't gone out and 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 done the same, and Sheffield United haven't. They've come up and they they've clearly prove that they're not quite strong enough and they probably will both go down and they'll they'll hopefully come back stronger and 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 use the money to to improve their team next season in a sustainably controlled thoughtful well-structured manner and um you know that's not to say that they're they're both perfect either probably you know but it's it's forest clearly were were being run in a very very odd manner no one you know no one has that turnover of players and it stood out like a sore thumb so you know um it clearly didn't seem right and and financially it obviously wasn't right so um yeah i just i just keep going back to my point you know you cheat you get punished and you take it on the chin and i I mean i've got obviously there are other um opinions going around about um, not in a forest, which will not be uh, mentioned on this podcast, just because uh, for legal reasons, you do not want to get uh, Marinakis actually coming after you. But let's just say, you know, there, there may be other things going on as to reason why so much money may need to be spent. And I say allegedly, you know, may need to be spent in in, in, in and around Nottingham Forest. Uh, anyway, you know, just just do a quick Google and you may may find out what we're talking about there. But let's just move on, uh, on about that, because let's talk about more positive things about um, Wembley on Tuesday night. We had, well, Wembley on Saturday and Tuesday. Um, on Saturday, um, England played Brazil uh, in a game that I was at. And it was, uh, I mean, I don't know what it looked like on TV, but uh, everyone in the stadium was just like, oh, geez, I need to just, I need to go home because it just wasn't the one. We had a very good night after the game. Me and the, the Blades who were coming down in a few weeks' time and soups and puns. I don't think puns might have disappeared. Uh, yeah, very late night till about four in the morning, as we normally do. Our little King's Cross haunt, uh, one of the places that we actually found after the Borough game with uh, Lord Lou Can. Uh, that was good. Uh, it was much better the post match than the game itself, and especially if Ivan Tony didn't come on for that Brazil game. However, the Belgium game, uh, Ivan Tony was uh, touted to be starting, and he did indeed, and he started uh, for England, which was a very proud moment in itself. And then, you know, um, midway through the first half, Ivan Tony actually scored. Uh, he, he got brought down for a penalty. He went down and, uh, and, and Ivan Tony style and, you know, he picked and then he got up and I remember everyone around me go, who's going to take it? Who's going to take it? And me and Soup said, Ivan Tony, of course. And they sort of look at us thinking, who's, who's, he? who's that bloke? You know what I'm saying? And he came up and he scored the goal and it was a tremendous moment. And me and Soup's were the only two people in the whole side of him singing the Ivan Tony beats the goalie all night long song which is saying it you know so which is all good so yeah we had a we had a great night actually which is which is good and i thought the game was a good game as well i mean you know last last minute equalizer and england's defense big question mark but forget about that the fact that ivan tony has put himself on the map you know he played pretty well his touches were good and uh yeah and and yeah i thought it was, i mean i haven't seen the game back like you would have seen it and you would have heard the analysis from the um the commentators i haven't heard any of that all i've done is i've seen behind the goal and after time he was at the other end where you're sort of you know squinting your eyes trying to see what's going on but uh in general i thought it was good mainly it was incredible yeah um you know uh, you rightly say it's you know it was it was such a proud moment you know we we 
talk about a lot the journey Brentford have come on and you know we never ever would have expected us you know some of us would never expected us to be in the top flight but to, to have one of our players uh, scoring a goal for England at Wembley was was hairs on arms right rising kind of stuff you know it it, it, it was it's it was it seems surreal sometimes you know and Ivan's a little bit marmite at times and you know with, with the betting betting ban and he's the impact of that on our season this year and some of the things he said about us you know um and the inevitable sale it kind of it kind of gets a bit lost but the magnitude of of of, of what a Brentford player has achieved uh it should should never be forgotten and uh you know seeing him step up I had every I had every faith in him we we, we watched him score penalties week in week out and uh the 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 pundits and the and the commentators they all were singing his praises and um i think that i think he he continues to surprise people some of his some of the ways some of his link up play with the midfield the way he drops deep the way he knocks the ball back and then he'll run into space and he'll, he'll be looking for looking for a return he'll be looking for service and he'll get great service with some of those england players you know Manu, it's, you know and um Jude Bellingham combined to set up the chance where where Tony burst in and got in front of his man and was brought down um you know it was a, it was a great move there was other there was other moments where I thought that Jared Bowen was was getting in um Ivan's way a little bit they seemed to be kind of competing in that same penalty area space I think Bowen was desperate to just to, to get his goal which you kind of understand he, he had a good you know a, a a, a decent goal ruled out for for offside, which would have you know which would have turned the game around um, you know just after just after um, Ivan's penalty. So uh, I, I just I just think he he really did play his way into the Euro squad. I, 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 I'm not I don't, I'm not quite sure what more he needs to do now. And Gareth Southgate is obviously criticised a lot of the time for being um, very safe in his selections. I think actually Ivan kind of helps him that. I, I, I think you know he'll only be back up to, to Harry Kane um, if he's if he's not injured. But um, he, he proved that he can he can lead the line. Um, Ollie Watkins can do that as well. And you know we we love we love Ollie. You know apart from his apart from his uh, behaviour at um, the GTEC the game a few few months ago where. He uh, took exception for comments from one person, and he seemed to have sullied his reputation. But you know, they're, they're, they're they are the best of the finest strikers we've got um, in in England for England at the moment. And I I, I think Kane, Watkins, and and Tony um, should be confident that they're they're all going to be going to Germany. Um, so I, I I don't necessarily think it it will be just two. I think he will take three because you know Harry Kane's fitness. Um, you know he, he hasn't he hasn't been sort of uh, you know consistently fit for the last few years. He's he's had time out. So and he's he's, he's getting on a bit as they say. So um, yeah, it's uh, I think I think Ivan will be in Germany and I think he'll be in Germany and still be a Brentford player. That's right, and I'm very much, as you know, looking forward to it. I've got my tickets, got my Eurostars booked, about 74 Eurostars going there and back, um, as you do. You know, we've always been planning our trip, uh, you know, mean puns and uh, the soups and the bread and all that lot, actually. And uh, we're very much actually looking forward to probably the most exciting part of the trip. We're looking forward to going to Wuppertal. And you know you know why we're looking forward to going to Wuppertal, Laney? Guess I've what they've got. got. Guess what they've got in um, Wuppertal with they, that they should have had in Brentford. Just, just one thing. Is it um is it a monorail? As um, they've got a monorail. They've got a monorail <laughs> in Wuppertal. And we look, when we saw it, we were so excited. We just go, oh my God, no, this, this monorail was meant to be going to Lionel Road Stadium. And I don't know what happened to the plans on that one. However, we need to make sure that we get our monorail tucked. So we're all, actually, we all get stuff sort of packed. I've even mean, booked a hotel in Wuppertal to make sure that, you know, just to get to it's a late nighter on that one. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good guess. That was a really good guess, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a very good guess, you know. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, and it's a bit of a weird monorail as well. Like you know, what I'm saying there's all sorts of strangeness going on with it. So uh, yeah, very much looking forward to to that. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably more than I'm looking forward to the games actually. So uh, in in the group games anyway. So it's is all good. Also looking forward to the game against Denmark as well, uh, which is in Frankfurt. There's going to be all sorts of characters there as well. I think when the, the Danish chums have already been contacting me saying we're going to meet be meeting up in Frankfurt. So I think uh, the Friday, the, the night before the game and the night of the game are going to be quite I'll, lively. I'll be over. I'll be over for that one. Oh, for that one. oh loyal. So, uh, so yes, which is all good. So, anyway, yeah, which is, which is, which, like I said to you, looking forward to that as well. Um, other than that, what else is going on? Oh, yeah, uh, any bees, the American bees out there? I should see you in Nashville. I know, I know Lane was going out to Aston Villa next week, but I, I cashed in my villa ticket. And like I said to you, I'm going to be off to Nashville. So, any bees, uh, see you. I'll see you next, next, what's it, next, next Saturday at nine o'clock watching the villa game, nine o'clock in the morning watching the villa game in front of the big screen. And I suppose probably where we are, we're going to have to be drinking Budweiser or something really horrendous on the, on the beer front mm. but you know but we we'll have to uh well, we can we can we can make up with that because after that we can go off and do what we want as well and just want to give a big shout as well there was a there was a conference as well at Brentford Stadium on Wednesday and Nitty Raj actually had a little little intro on that as well and there was a big Brentford contingent down there Marcus Gale was down there as well um it was actually a grassroots football conference called your uh, um your game your way oh is it my game my way um, your game your way my game my way I should know shouldn't I because I was on the panel um, and like I said you really good event there was probably about 150 people there different you know London FA Middlesex FA loads of good football people grassroots people people within the diversity in football as well um, but for me I mean just the reason why I just quickly mentioned it it's just that it was really good to have it at Brentford Stadium it shows that we put ourselves on the map the amount of people that are you know that I knew or didn't know come up to me going are you going to that event at Brentford Stadium in a couple of weeks time I'm you know my game my, my, your game your way or my game my way you go into that and I'm just like well yeah I'm on the panel so it kind of just it's just opened Brentford up again to be a club which is doing things um positive things in different areas but also like I said it's really really reaching out. I mean we had people that came down from St George's Park to go to that people that came down from Manchester I think we had the Manchester City woman who's come down to that event as well she works at Manchester City Watford oh yeah I mean maybe might have a laugh actually they that's a bit of a joke as well because I was on the panel but then you had to go out into the into the audience and uh, you had to sit with them and you had to do some sort of kind of um, you know little workshop thing and I happened to be put on guess what team they put me on a table with lady, lady what do you think oh, you, it wasn't Leeds was it no it wasn't Leeds actually no it wasn't Forest Leeds. no no it wasn't F- Forest Fulham. either no. they were just, yeah it's Fulham I was on the nah. Fulham table I think there was some sort of joke going on there where they put me on the Fulham table like you know so uh, yes uh, and there was, there was quite a few of them as well so I, 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 I think I offended myself quite well though, were they know, young saying. Fulham were they were they listening <laughs> the song that I was singing actually walking along I was singing a song <laughs> yeah yeah well, to be quite honest with you I don't, I don't think they were actually no. um, they, 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 well what I did notice is that they left um, they left about 10 minutes before the end you know what I'm saying all of them oh, yeah. they probably heard that you were going to build a bonfire that's probably why <laughs> Yeah, so they did. I, I did. I did crack a joke saying actually it was pretty silent on the table, which didn't go down particularly well. They, they, they always leave it. They always leave it before the end, anyway. Don't That's they? what I said. Yeah, they left him before <laughs> the end. Yeah, it's all yeah. good. But anyway. Um, yeah, so listen, we, we've had a good chin made talking about nothing there. Uh, oh, no, we should, I just, I mean, no, actually, there's one other thing that I want to talk about. This is not nothing because it's very important. We also had, and uh, JB's going to talk about it a little bit later, the women's game as well, where Brentford women took on... Uh, something took Lee. On, Lee, Ashton, something Ashton, 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 Ashton Lee. Yeah, Ashton Lee. I, should, I was about to say Ashton Kirsten, actually. Ashton uh, Ashmount, No, it's Ashmount Lee. Okay. Uh, they took on Ashmount Lee. Again, I should know because I was there. But again, it's funny because this international break, what you do is you get almost like a week or two off and then everything becomes a bit cloudy so uh, it was a really good uh day out again um the weather held up there was actually a little bit of sun even like you're saying we had the two stands both stands were pretty full there was a nice little vibe and brentford went out and they did the absolute business they scored six goals Ashmount Lee got uh, their one goal uh, i'm not sure who got it right on the podcast here you know i know that i said nine one uh, and I think somebody else said sort of five nil or six, seven nil or something like that. But I don't know if anyone actually got six one as well. But it was a really, really good day out again. Like I said to you, um, um, good, good, good mix of people. You know, uh, Brentford fans, non-Brentford fans, young sort of kind of you know young you know, girls, schoolgirls, uh, young footballers, 
girls and, 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 and boys as well, plus, you know, older people, just, just a really good mix and a really good day out. And uh, I know there's a lot of people that may not be, have been able to make it for various reasons, but I, I know they're going to be doing this fairly regularly. And what I'll say to you is that you should definitely come down. You know, the, the, the football is good. They, they scored some wicked goals. I mean, there was, a, there was a goal that was scored from, what was it, probably about... 30 35 40 yards and lobbed the keeper as well that was actually a wicked goal so uh should definitely definitely look out for that and, and brentford are actually on course not on course but um for the, to win the league not saying they will do because the team at the top of the league i think they've probably played about four or five games less than them so they need to win all those games to come within a couple of points but the, the key game is on the 21st of april where they're playing benfica Okay, or East Benfica, or whatever they're called, like I'm saying, and that's the key game. And I think whoever wins that game is going to win the league. So uh, look out for that one because uh, I think it might be worth going down. With I think it should be quite lively. I'm not sure if it's home or away. Uh, I think Benfica play at Regent's Park if they play at their home, but if not, obviously Brentford play at Bedfont. So go and definitely check that out. Even though they might even move that game to down down near you, down to Staines, I think it is, because they play at Staines sometimes as well, don't they, Laney? Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So they might move that one. It's a bit of a BG. Like I was saying, get the crowd behind and try and get the Benfica waking in their boots. So uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, come down, come down to Benfica, Laney. Yeah, yeah, I forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah go to Benfica, just get a plane, go to you know to Portugal and just. You know, go and see Benfica. But no, it's not them actually. It's another Benfica. Yes. Sorry, yeah, sorry. But anyway, listen, we've we've waffled on for far too long. We need to come back and actually focus our mind, focus our mind on the nine-game season. We're going to go away. We're going to come back, and unfortunately, we're going to have to talk about Burnley. Brentford played Burnley a couple of weeks ago. Now it was. It's quite. It seems seems like an absolute eon ago. It was a game that was billed as a not-lose game. Not necessarily a must-win, but a not-to-lose game. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't go quite to plan because Brentford lost against Burnley. And the Burnley fans were very happy. They are very excited. You cannot argue against the result, even though there were some mitigating circumstances that actually uh, caused the result to happen, like uh, one of our players getting sent off after six minutes, which does not help. And also in the second half, you know, there are certain things that happen, including a goal, which there's a big question mark, which is scored in, well, pretty much time added on. Um, it's a big question mark as to whether or not that goal was a uh, disallowed goal or not. But it stood and things went against us and uh, went against us and we didn't get three points. And it was mightily disappointed. I have to put my hand up and say that I had a game with my Panthers girls up in Hertfordshire, so there's no way I was going to be able to get to Burnley on that day as well. But luckily, I met the Lambrisco, and we went uh, locally in uh, Berkhamstead, and we managed to get the laptop out, and we watched a game live in Berkhamstead amongst all sorts of characters, and they must have wondered what was going on with these Brentford fans jumping up and down in the middle of the booster. But you were right in the middle of the mixer there, weren't you, lady? Yeah, the really long... It was it was a it was a decent day out to be honest with you. Um, you know, as a as a as a day a day out of the football, a, cl- a classic keep football out of the football day. Um, the game itself was was really frustrating, and uh, yeah, nothing nothing seemed way right. anything that could not go our way seemed, seemed to uh, not go our way, and it just it 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 started off just in the in the in the most chaotic way with with Sergio Reguilon being being sent off. Uh, inside the stadium, it looked, you know, we were confused because the referee, you know, waved play on and um, we went from a situation where we were, you know, uh, it was still it was still nil-nil with, with 11 men and we, the referee hadn't judged that to be a penalty. Then it was a penalty and a sending off and we were one nil down and it was it was just kind of, yeah, the game was tipped on his head. And to be, to be fair, Brentford really, really did push especially in the second half um they went they went hell for leather and uh, on another day uh we we would have got a point out of that i thought we i thought we did well in the circumstances um i think fleck and got away with a, with one where you know the, the, there was a lapse of concentration didn't see someone lurking behind him and you know on the stroke of half time we, we could have gone in down two um, and then um, there was also another one where they cleared off the line, and it, it could have been one-one. It was, it was, it was a, a lot of big opportunities that, that 
didn't did, didn't go our way or a lot of turning points that didn't go our way um and we, we came away with 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 zero points and it it was it was really concerning that our luck doesn't seem to change um it, it, it well, as we said in the intro, really, the, the, the break came, you know, the international break came at a, a really good time because, you know, undoubtedly the massive, massive silver lining out of all of that was Brian and Bumo coming back um, and, and starting and looking really bright and um, come on and kind of hide it out on the wing and kind of try and kind of ease his way back in. He came on. Um, and there's every reason to suggest that you know if he can stay fit, that he's going to impact um, the end of the season in the same way or in a similar way to the way he impacted the beginning of the season because he was on fire in those early weeks of the, of the campaign, scoring, setting up, and um, he, he looked like well up for replacing Ivan Tony in that team. And you know the the, the tragedy was that you know the, we, in the game that. Got turned over down in, in in Brighton before Christmas was was not only a defeat we, we saw we saw him get sidelined for for months as well so yeah the, the, that that was the silver lining for me um, but we 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 touched upon this on the intro and, and as you just said you know there's nine games now to uh, to kind of just focus upon and we've got Man United <laughs> on on Saturday night so they don't get a lot bigger than that and um, I'm looking forward to a very Chris, GTEC. Listen, the question, the Regulon. Okay, so Regulon gets sent off mm. after six minutes. What was the view in the stadium? What were the thoughts in the stadium on that? Because I, I, I sort of kind of felt a lot of, sort of anger emanating from uh, from that decision. Uh, not from the referee or from anything else that's going on, but from more from Regulon. Just for what the hell are you doing? Yeah, there, there was that. I mean, I guess, I guess in... Uh, because we haven't really uh, action replays to kind of look look back upon, it looked like uh, it, it's really weird as a fan because you're watching it and then you see you see contact made right in front of us. It was it was right in front of the you know the away fan section, and the ref because the referee waves play on, you assume that it's, there's nothing really to there's, there's the, the it wasn't a foul, you know, um, and it took. It took several. It, it took a, a several dozen uh, re, rewinds to 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 kind of get to a situation where the referee gave him a straight red. Um, it wasn't even a booking. You know, it, it wasn't a booking. It, it was the 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 thing. It got frustrating because of the double jeopardy. Not not only it wasn't. You know, if it, it, yes, it was a penalty. I don't think anyone's disputing that in hindsight. And and um, um, Thomas Frank. Matter, completely matter of factly said, yes, it was a penalty, and it's ending off. But it was the it was the from from play on, wave play on to everything piling down on us. That seemed to be a big switch round, you know, not not just a penalty and a booking and one nil down. It was a it was a penalty, a sending off and one nil down in the first ten minutes of the game, and it was a big old shout. Um, I, I think you know. I think I think Regulon has shown why he can't um, he can't kick on to that next level at, at the bigger clubs he was at. You know, Tottenham and Man United. He he does seem to be a bit of a liability. Um, and I guess the plus side, if there is one, um, is, is that at least we've kind of tried before we bide and. Um, I I personally don't think if there is a chance of us signing him, that we we should. He seems to be very overvalued, um, and he he's obviously uh, he's, he's better than having no left back or having people filling in. Um, but uh, you realise what Rico Henry, what a player he is compared to Sergio Regalon. Rico Henry's in a in a different league. Um, and if 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 Regulon is considered to be one of the one of the best left backs in the Premier Division, for for you know for for Tottenham and for Man United to be giving him time, then you know wh- where's where's Rico Henry in the in in the in the kind of pecking order? I mean, it just shows you you know he should have got an England cap before he got injured, and what a tragedy it's been that we've missed him. 
Yeah. So, I mean, interesting. I mean, you're talking about the, the Regulon and the vibe in the stadium. Let's go into the fans. Let's see what they had to say about that Burnley match straight after the game. You know, there's, there's a lot to take out of that game. The first thing is we had a mountain to climb when Regulon got sent off. The, the lad, he's obviously a young lad, he's got, he needs to have a long, hard look at himself after that because he has basically put us in the shit there. Um, I would say that defeat is, is on Reggion's head. It's, from what I've heard, it was a ridiculous challenge, no chance of winning it. Um, and, you know, I just, I just, you can't do that. You can't, you can't survive for, like, 95 minutes with 10 men against, against 12. And once again, I come back to the refereeing decisions... The refs in this division are a fucking disgrace. I don't care what anyone says. Any of the apologists can can do what they like. But the refereeing is appalling. Nothing wrong with that goal at the end. Disappointed to say the least. But surely we must get the rub of the green soon. Because everything went against us today. You know, I'm not saying it wasn't a penalty, definitely. But sending off, I'm not sure. You know, that last 25, that last 25 minutes gave us hope. We've played as a team. We should have got something out of that game. The ref gave us nothing. We worked hard. We were fantastic. But we're going to do it. We just we just need some confidence. We need that winning, we need that winning feeling back. And, 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 and there isn't much of it at the moment. But there is positives. We'll be all right. It's difficult. It's tight without a doubt. We did say we must not lose this. But looking at Burnley's performance today, fair play to them. They have won it today. That early sending off clearly changed the whole dynamic. But the last 15, 20 minute tactics by uh, Thomas Frank was excellent to see that power play. Has a risk with it, but Christ, we nearly got something out of that. And it almost was a was a lose game, but we didn't. We're going to get on with it. But I think we are still better than that bottom three. They took all year to decide whether it's a foul or not. If, it's, if it is, then fair enough, he has to go. But we try to get back into it at the end. when we, They were struggling against us when we brought on the subs at the end. Like, they were worried. Uh, we were shit. Raguilion let us down. Silly foul at the start of the game. And it's cost the rest of the team, unfortunately. The majority of people who aren't Brentford fans that's, that's, tell me, you know, they think we are absolutely fine. And I think completely opposite. You know, I watch you know, performances like that against teams in and around us, below us today. Yeah, what, what do we give? What, you know, they, they, they wanted it more. Yes, we got a red card and yeah, there's one goal in it, but I think they wanted it more from the minute one. When you start that, that, that badly and initially you think unluckily, I'll have to watch it back properly, but you feel very, very much hard done by. I don't quite know how they can call that last man when it's not clear and obvious, but it is what it is. Um, and yeah, it is, it is starting to make it a little bit tight down where we are at the moment. I'm not going to pretend that it's not, but... Um, we still, still did more than enough in that game to win it. I think that's the bottom line. We're making substitutions so late and then we're looking so sprightly, so promising. And you're thinking, like, why haven't we done this sooner? We're more, we're more than better than them. We're making them look good at that point. We can blame it all we like on last minute goals being disallowed and extra stoppage not being played when the keeper's gone down for a head injury he didn't even get. It's being told by his own teammates to go down with a head injury, tapping their head. But you can play more of those situations all you like. But bottom line is, we had the chances in the game. As you said, with that chance, Whistler's chance, that we could have turned it around. And instead, we end up going 2-0 down. We give ourselves a mountain to climb with already exhausted players. They've been playing, most people, most teams play 10 aside last 30 minutes of a game, last 20 minutes of a game. We played a full 90 plus with a man down. I think they played amazing given that circumstance. But we've got no one to blame for ourselves for not taking the chances that we were given. There you go, fans, after the Burnley game, fairly resigned to, uh, fairly, fairly resigned, sort of, like I said, a little bit of anger emanating there as well. And there's all sorts of sort of kind of in the stadium, something that probably haven't seen for a while, where you've got the sort of characters being kind of sort of, like, sort of taken out and just, you know, spoken to and just kind of just anger brimming over a little bit, you know, which you do get at frustrating time. I mean, it doesn't only happen at Brentford, it happens at, you know, Everton, I've heard it's been happening, Nottingham Forest, I've heard it be sort of kicking off and stuff like that. I think probably, you know, probably Sheffield United, they're probably so resigned to going down, you probably don't get that happening there, but you felt a little bit of that sort of kind of frustration, did you, lady? 
Yeah, very, very much so. Yeah, especially, especially at, towards the end where we thought we'd equalised. You know, Ivan Tony was a judge to have fouled the goalkeeper where he was in the air already, and the goalkeeper would have been basically jumping up into his armpit, and uh, um, it looked like the ball was was going in anyway. To be honest, without without, uh, it looks like the the, the goalkeeper. Had misjudged the cross and the flight of the ball, and um, he'd reacted a bit late. So, yeah, there was this. I thought I celebrated as if we'd equalised because, again, it was literally right in front of me, and I, I, I didn't see it. I can see why it was given as a foul, but again, you know, I, I, maybe that goes to maybe that goes to VAR, and they they give us something. Um, uh, yeah, we, we we tried really really hard, uh, and yeah, there, it, there was frustration at the end because uh, it, it was just a case of what what might have been. Um, I, I thought we deserved at least a point from that. I think if the game goes on for another ten minutes, we, we probably do get a point out of that. I don't think the players could have tried any harder second half, but you know, we travelled a long way, and uh, not that that you know not that counts for anything. But um, so, so it was a long day out. To, to kind of suffer like yet more misfortune, and I think I think the tide has to turn at some stage. Um, I think you know I think we've we've had our fair share of unfortunateness, and uh, um, I just I just want us want us to get uh, one, at least ninety minutes where we can defend really solidly, we can take the chances that our XG. Uh, you know, is, is creating, um, and we can look at a fairly easy, easy win where you know at both ends of the pitch things have gone gone to our advantage, and we've got three points. And then it just takes a lot of pressure out. I mean, one three point haul isn't isn't going to be safe. Was isn't going to mean safety all on its own. But I think the the whole mood around the camp is that you know we can win again. Um, it seems a long time since that Wolves game. And the Forest game seems even longer ago. So um, yeah, three three points will will change everything. But got a tough two games ahead of us. Well, tough three games ahead of us. Things things don't get any easier. Man United, Brighton at home. Then we've got a trip to Aston Villa. All really really tricky fixtures. Yeah, definitely tricky fixtures. Look, I mean, let's just have a look at see where uh, Burnley and Brentford. Um, kind of fared on the pitch as well. Burnley, they were effective at creating goal scoring opportunities through through balls and also goal scoring opportunities from the flanks and they were strong at finishing. Uh, this is from whoscored.com as well. Um, they were caught offside often, which was their uh, weakness. For Brentford, we stole the ball often from Burnley and also created goal scoring opportunities from set pieces, but we were aggressive and we were also caught offside often. Uh, the top performers was Murich as well for Burnley, got 7.9 as well. Then you got Aya, 7.5. Matthias Jensen got 7.5. And then Odeba, 7.3. And uh, Jakob Larsen as well got 7.3. So it gives you a vibe. I'll tell you something as well, because we did a, um, uh, what was a player at play of the match as well? Um, didn't really lay a, I don't know if you remember, I think it was Aya as well that won the play of the match, wasn't it? Um, yeah, 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 he did. Yeah, yeah. So again, so he got the besotted global player of the match was done by the Tasmanian B as well, who's coming over uh, very soon. I think he might even be here for the Brighton game, uh, but he's definitely here for the Sheffield United game because him and his crew are going to be down the globe. His whole family going to be down there. The globe just tucking right into all sorts of globe action. So uh, yeah, it's good to see the old Tasmanian B come all the way over from Tasmania. Somebody actually said to me today. I said to you, the Tasmanian B's coming over, <laughs> and he said, "Is there such a thing?" And I just went, yes, there is. And he went, amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so people, if you just sort of kind of just get that into your mind, basically we have somebody coming over from Tasmania, Brentford fan with this whole family to come and watch a couple of Brentford games. And that is the kind of thing that kind of happens in this new Brentford era. Um, so I was a, I was, I was a top, top, top boy in that game. Ian Out finished second and Mbumo finished third as well as uh, Aya's first man of the match of the season and his 14th player of the earth to, to actually win man of the match this season we keep talking about how many different players and one player of the match man of the match this season which probably goes to show you how many um changes have probably been in the side we've had to just keep on just kind of sort of kind of refreshing like you know get the turnstiles going to get another player in and oh no he's just one man of the match because he's just a you know and then that's left on the pitch but you know so which is all good but um yeah so i mean just coming back just quickly briefly about that burnley game laney um Look, look, result didn't go according to plan. First half was a bit frustrating, but probably I'd say second half, it showed signs that you're sort of thinking, actually, um, you know, this is kind of what we need to see Brentford performing like towards, you know, the back end of the season in this nine game season. Is that right? 
Yeah, I look, you know, you know where I stand on this. It's it's that, uh, you know, very we've been in a, an awful run, but it's only a handful of those games where we've looked like completely out of our depth and swamped. Um, the beginning of the game at West Ham kind of highlighted that and, you know, the beginning of the second half away at Tottenham uh, where, you know, we look so fragile. Um, but then in most of the games, we still look potent coming forward. And I, I, there's enough about us, I, I, I think. Now we've got Brian and Bumo, Sharda looks like he's going to be contending quite soon. I'm not quite sure with one or two of the others whether Hickey's going to be out until right towards the end or whether Pinnock Pin- has been a lot quiet not a lot of noise about where Ethan Pinnock is. We miss him a lot. Um, there, there still seems to be enough about us with with games against some of those below us to come. Where you know, if we don't win them all, if we just take points off of them, it's it's almost you know it's, it's almost uh, job done there as well. But I, 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 I'm, I don't, I'm not looking at in my eyes. I'm not looking at a relegated you know a relegated team. So um, uh, it's not the too good to go down mentality I'm just kind of like just saying as it is I'm not I'm not looking at my team thinking they're just awful they're, they're, they're better than that they're way better than that I just as I keep saying just want us to get a bit of luck to go our way and you know everything's going to be okay we, we're, we're long overdue that yeah, yeah. Just, just quickly, just talking on the XG front as well. Um, there's no peace breakdown this week because uh, it it's not an American holiday, but there's, there's, you know, there's just on a bit of a chill tip. But they'll be back for the next week's games as well. But um, so the 2.77 was the expected goals for Burnley, 1.16 for Brentford. So, you know, Burnley actually created sort of quite sort of <laughs> some fairly decent uh, high opportunity chances there as well. So, you know, some people may argue to say that we actually probably got away with 2-1 and it probably could have been 3-1 uh, uh, as well. So, you know... Or, or could it be 3-2, depending on whether or not you count that final goal as a or non-goal as a goal as well. So, like I said to you, still work to be done. But like I said to you, a few games that we on. And uh, I tell you what, you know, listen, we can only do what we're going to do. And, and, and as JB will say, because we've got JB coming up now with some facts and funk, JB is looking at the positive side of Brentford. He's talking about penalties. He's talking about Ivan Tony. He's talking about internationals. He's talking about all sorts of stuff as well. And uh, record standing uh, the women's games attendances, which is uh, and all sorts of stuff. So listen, let's go to JB. Let's have a listen to his facts and his funk. Are you ready for this? I told you it was coming. Hello, Jonathan Birchall here again. This week we finally saw something that no Brentford fan has ever seen in our 135 year history. One of our players scoring a goal for the England national team. We had seen Ivan score a penalty in that goal at that end of Wembley in the playoff final three years ago. But he hadn't actually taken a competitive penalty for the last 50 weeks. That was in our game with Newcastle last April, when he scored one, but also did the unthinkable and missed one too. Staying with penalties, by this stage of a Thomas Frank season, we would normally have been awarded an average of five penalties. This season we've had just two, neither of which were at the GTEC. It's the first time in this millennium that we've reached this stage of a season and not yet been awarded one at home. And going into Saturday's game, not only is that stat against us, but it's also in our previous 15 league encounters with Manchester United, we've never been awarded a penalty. Back to our last league action and our trip to Burnley. Unless you travelled to Turf Moor for our games in 1935 or 1996, then you've not seen a win in the other 14 visits we've made in League and Cup. It was however great to see Brian and Bumo back after 13 Premier League games out. When he came on, he was reunited with Ivan Tony. It had been 315 days since they'd both been on the pitch together. That was back on the 6th of May last year at Anfield. On the flip side, there was the red card. It's been just over 10 years since we last had a lone E sent off. But coincidentally, another left back, Jake Bidwell. He, of course, then went on to sign permanently for us and make over 100 appearances and will be playing in this year's FA Cup semi-final for his current side Coventry City against Saturday's visitors, Manchester United. Last Saturday saw Brentford's women's team win at the GTEC, 
The crowd was 4,856. Excluding behind closed doors games, that was a higher attendance than the men's team has had for over 250 home league matches in the last 40 years. So there you go, JB, Fats and Funk. And uh, yeah, he, he, JB, he, he, he went, he, he, he was on a right mission there, wasn't he, Laney? He, he was weaving in and out of all sorts of Fats and Funk business. He's got his, certainly got his facts book out, hasn't yeah. he? He's, um, yeah, he's, 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 done, he's done well. Done yeah. well, the, the kid JB this week. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you as always. Appreciate all that. That's right. Much appreciated. But listen, Saturday, got a match. Mm. We are playing Manchester United. It's a late kickoff. It's 8 o'clock kickoff. And uh, I think lots of characters are quite up for it. There's been a bit of a flurry on the old uh, what's that rings on the on the tickets. Sort of people flying around, sort of people left, right, and centre. You know, we thought Easter weekend there'd be a lot of people missing. In action, so they'll be they won't be there, but there seems to be lots of people to replace them and take their place. So I think it's going to be quite lively at New Griffin Park on a Saturday night, actually under the lights and Luckin City. This is going one stage further because we're not talking about the five thirty off, which is normally fairly lively. We're talking about the eight o'clock one, which is going to be absolutely potty for it. Um, tell you what we're going to do: we're going to go away, we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about Manchester United. Man United coming to New. Griffin Park and uh, they're going to be looking back at last season thinking no no not them long again because uh, we did them good and proper at our stadium last season to be fair when we went up to theirs we looked like we were going to do them good and proper up at their place was that that's, was that last season was that earlier this season this is, that's earlier this season actually wasn't it was it yeah it yeah, was October that's right it was on October actually so since we played Man United back in the last season and then they, then we've gone up to their place earlier this season looked like we we're going to do them good and proper we were one nil down in the 90th minute and then McTominay came on very famously scored two goals in a very short space of time and denied us <laughs> one point to us three points it was a very sad moment um however you know what that says to me and I think you know what it says to a lot of people and, and looking at Manchester United they're one of these teams that they're always always beatable um, they've got a number of things going on. It's interesting. You've got uh, Christian Eriksen, who was very well loved down at Brentford, but then he decided to make a move to go up to Manchester. And I think it's fair to say that, you know, it, it's it's not been the honeymoon that he's expected it to be. And and that the vibes that I'm getting is that he kind of wants to leave and maybe just go elsewhere because he's not, especially as he's not getting the game time that he's getting. And, and part of the reason why he wanted to come back was he wanted to get the game time so that he can get into the... Danish national side and he could be an integral part of the Danish national side because obviously that's a big thing for him at the moment now so uh, like I said to you it's not it's not all sort of swimmingly it's not all going down particularly well in Manchester however they do eke out little results here and there and I think on Saturday we just have to make sure that we're not one of these teams where Manchester United all of a sudden bang they get on it and they they eke out result in it Laney yeah we 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 kind of we can't take what happens uh for granted uh last season they will they'll want to come and get some kind of revenge but you know that jensen goal up at old trafford i thought it looked like well we were under the cosh weren't we <laughs> at the end but it looked like we were gonna hold out and then you know scott mctominay came and 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 it literally burst burst the beast bubble and not with just one with two we come away with nothing um but but man united come on a little bit of a wave you know they'll they'll still be buzzing off of the um the fa cup win um two weekends ago where they scored in the late 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 knockings of uh extra time against liverpool and um they yeah the euphoria around the stadium was palpable you could feel that um and you know just just seeing you know the way robbie maynu performed for england he, he looks in in great form and we've got a lot lot to be concerned about uh, everywhere um uh, it seems a long time ago now that Christian Eriksen played for us. It was, you know, it, it, I guess it was. But um, you know, uh, will he will he be given a good reception? Uh, it's unlikely. <laughs> so uh, I think we've had, I think there'll be quite a few cold drinks consumed before kickoff. I think there's going to be a real kind of 
pit of an atmosphere at, at the GTEC, and and I and I, th- and I encourage people to come down to the globe beforehand and and kind of uh, to join in that kind of match preparation. You know, we go through a very very strategic match prep, don't we, Bill? You know, we've got we've got <laughs> coaches, you've got drink drink coaches that come in and and help and help us before games just to get lubricated, stretched, ready for ready for action. So uh, yeah, the come, sleep, come and join sleep us. Co- the sleep coaches as well sometimes for people after the match as well <laughs> yeah, how, especially on the train home bill <laughs> that's right depending how good the match is actually and, and and like i said to you the weird thing that we have about how it goes is that the later the kickoff is always the earlier the start so if there's a, a three o'clock kickoff we kind of get down the pub maybe about one o'clock in the afternoon if you can do but if it's a 5 30 kickoff we we kind of try and meet up at 11 but um there's all sorts of ridiculous plans for the eight o'clock kickoff like i was saying so uh yeah it just gives you more things to do during the day which is sort of kind of geared towards brentford so uh i think we we may start in richmond again uh, on Saturday, it hasn't, 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 hasn't been, it hasn't been, it hasn't been, it hasn't been enough focused on it. We haven't even thought about it as yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure Q yeah. will be involved as well. We don't normally do the Q unless we get, we've got, we've got a good patch to do the Q as well. But maybe we might even, you know, tuck into Brentford as well, like, you know, a bit, a bit old school. So we'll, we'll just do the full Monty. So I'm very much looking forward to it, actually. Well, like, we did, um, before the Man United, I mean, maybe we ought to do exactly what we did before the Man United game last year. Well, you know, I know the weather's not going to be the same. It was roasting. It was a roasting all this day early september day and uh we went to uh, we met at uh strand of the green and um we had a, had a few drinks down there and um remember we got quite merry actually yeah we went off to the game and um kind of just couldn't believe our eyes that we we're four nil up before the break and uh it was it was uh dream time so yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. Come, come, come down, people. Yeah. Straight, it'd be nice to meet a few of you that fancy fancy a drink with us before the game or after yeah. the game, and yeah. um, just make a bit of a bit of a big Brentford Saturday night of it. To be honest, That's right? And the back room and the besotted den at the back yes. as well. Just come on down, yeah. which is all good. But anyway, listen, <laughs> we, we're talking about sort of kind of you know, there's no football being talked about at all. Actually, no. we need to we need to just get a bit of football knowledge about Manchester United because if they're going to come down and cause us a few problems, we need to know about it. We got Vicky otherwise known as General Outburst. She's going to give us the lowdown on Manchester United. Hi, my name is Vicky and I am Witterbird84 on the X and I've been a Man United fan since I was in the womb. Literally, my mum took me to Old Trafford back in the day when I was in her tummy. What's the vibe like at Man United at the moment? You, you must be buzzing from that cup win against Liverpool a couple of weekends ago. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very, very different contrast to uh, the game at Brentford last season, isn't it? I think the vibe's pretty good. Going on that Liverpool game sort of has the vibes of last season when we beat Liverpool and then we all sort of gelled together. Say we, United gelled together and then Things like that sort of made things more successful because obviously that was after the last Brentford game, which I don't really want to talk about, but I guess we're going to talk about it. So describe that defeat, you know, 4-0 down at half-time. It, it must have been just awful to be watching that as a, as a Manchester United fan, 4-0 to Brentford. It was the beginning of the season, that loss, um, and the team just hadn't been forming it was a mismatch, um, but it was just it was just a nightmare that game. And I think when me scored, I think it was like the thirty fifth minute. That's when, yeah, it just it was just carnage. Um, De Gea, that goal, oh dear, Eriksson like pretty much gave it to him. Oh my dear, and um, but Brentford, yeah, give it it gave him quite the momentum for the rest of the season. Um, and it definitely, definitely was a lesson learned that day, wasn't it? You got out of jail up at Old Trafford this season as well. Uh, Matty Jensen had put us a, a goal up, and it looked like anything that you chucked at us was going to be defended. Then Scott McTominay came and, and flipped the game on its head, scored two goals right, right in the depths of injury time. Um, <laughs> what did you think about that? Oh yeah, reliving that, reliving that game for a minute there. Um, yeah, it was just like what, nothing was happening. We don't didn't have a striker at the time that was like match ready. Um, and yeah, Scott McTominay was just there last minute, 
and then he went fine take the draw and then boom and it was like yeah it was one of those games that Manchester United seem to do best at the moment is have these last minute impact goals it's a shame that it has to come to that sometimes but what are you going to do about it other than just get more players and get the the squad fit enough and that's the problem problem that Manchester United have been having. Tell us about Robbie Maynou. Um he's, he's having a, a, an incredible impact on the Man United team and obviously the England t- the England debut he made this week against Belgium has, has, has got the world talking about him. Is there is there kind of really massively high hopes for him and, and who else should we be scared about? Maynou is just something special. His calmness, his composure, it's just it's sensational and only from such a young lad um, I'm a bit nervous thinking that he might be played too much like obviously playing the whole, the whole 70 minutes for England and just being pretty much their star boy for that um, I think Garnacho is definitely someone to be watching out for but same, he's also been playing a lot and he, they both look tired in the second half um, definitely think Hoyland's back so Definitely a threat there. He's such a good striker for such a young age. Really lucky with that one. Such potential that um, Manchester United have in the future. Hopefully we get to get keep keep Eric Ten Hag for it um, because he'll be one of the best people to bring out the youth because he done that with Ajax. Um, and then obviously the best thing that Ajax did was like be a football factory because they sell all the young players off. Are the Manchester United supporters excited about the Jim Ratcliffe takeover? You know, after years of campaigning against the Glaziers, what what are your hopes and the expectations of uh, of Ratcliffe and uh, the kind of uh, the, you know the different different regime from the one you've been uh, you've been so anti for for so many years? I think any involvement with the Glaves has been pulled away from Old Trafford that is not seen nothing but a good thing of course I think everybody would like to see the Glazers out but this is a time period of just slowly dragging them out um, and taking the football decisions away from them which is so important because they can't make football decisions they practically only make signings over the how many likes they have on Instagram and do weird contracts but um, yeah I mean a new stadium by the sounds of it's coming along and then when people were hearing about the government putting money into Old Trafford it's actually not Old Trafford it's actually the housing areas and other things surrounding them because I don't think Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos should be paying for the housings around Old Trafford but it definitely needs an upgrade and that's definitely where the government should help that community but yeah um, it's nice to see some actual football people coming in with like football minds rather than ex-bankers with ugh, their favourite sport is rugby um, yeah so I've, it's, I think it's all seen as good except for these rumours about Gareth Southgate which is just horrible <laughs> in all honesty I'm not a fan gives you a big pit in the stomach especially when you hear from the right people that yeah they are really considering it and I don't really want to have a manager that got Middlesbrough eradicated. So what are you expecting from Brentford on Saturday night? Is the game about just about revenge from last season? Uh, or, or, or are you expecting uh, you know, a lot more than that as a Manchester United fan? What I expect in the game is it's just going to... To me, it's just going to be carnage. Just pure carnage. Um, I feel like it's going to even... It's just going to be midfield against midfield. Bringing yours up, probably you go into the back three rather than have a back four. Manchester United still having our injuries come back, but Onana seems to have got better in formation because his confidence is up and he's a confidence player. So hopefully, yeah, I really think it's going to be a pretty good game. Um, I'm really excited for it. A late night on a Saturday can either break your weekend can't it um ruin your saturday night or it could make it so yeah looking forward to it really thinking that it might be 3-2 to united i I just to me i expect goals so there you go the general outburst vicky's giving us a general outburst there about manchester united and uh make you nervous are you just you you kind of chilled with it 
I'm actually quite chilled. I've been I've been chilled most of the season, and to be to be honest, even even in the stre- most stressy times. But yeah, I, I I I'm thinking we get something out of this. To be honest with you, I think there's a there's a there's a good chance. I, get, I just I just kind of look into you know Ivan and, and Brian, and you know obviously the concerns what we do at left back because Serge is, is, is out suspended. Um, he's got some decisions to be made there. Uh, Thomas and but you know if you listen to his piece on the, the Brentford uh, official site he did a did a kind of a video kind of update a bit of a it wasn't really a rally in the troops but he kind of you know he, he underlined the fact that you know he we need to make it a fortress on on, on Saturday and how how Brentford players that would they will give their all and we, we need to kind of get behind them and yeah it was it was it was a it was a timely kind of like uh, update and uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, he's got. He's got. He doesn't often get his tactics wrong. Um, obviously, they've got some standout players, and if they all perform to their to their very highest potential, then you know we're we're going to get beaten again. But uh, we, we do seem to have a knack of of getting the tactics right against the the big teams. And although they sometimes, if not always, this season have ended in in defeat. At least, you know, uh, whether that be at Man United, Man City away, or, or Arsenal away, we we've 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 made them work for their victories. We've not rolled over, and even the one at Tottenham in the end was 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 really tight. So, yeah, I I I I've got belief in our team still, and um, I I think we're going to do okay, mate. Yeah, I'm just looking at where Manchester United are strength and weaknesses. They're strong at coming back from losing positions and also protecting the lead but where they're weak finishing scoring chances stopping opponents from creating chances a fouling fouling in dangerous areas aerial duels can defending counter attacks defending set pieces and they're very weak at avoiding your sides so i mean this there's, there's quite a lot for us to get our teeth into there isn't it laney yeah and you know, i think the game up at old trafford kind of just highlighted the fact that you know the, the two goals in the end came from a, you know a fairly unusual source you know scott mctominay although he was on good form at the time we did well to kind of mark the the the, the, the true danger men but then there's always someone that comes deeper and you know with fresh legs he came on and um and he, he made a big difference and you know the the Flecken, to be honest with you, wasn't 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 at his what wasn't at his uh, you know in his best form at that time, um, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was a it was a game where you know we we probably were we were we were just properly kicking ourselves afterwards, weren't we? Yeah, definitely kicking ourselves, but hopefully no kicking of ourselves on Saturday. Uh, God knows what the weather's going to be like, but like I said to you, you know, hopefully the sun will be shining. <laughs> before the game on us and just give us some positive rays uh, because we need them like I said to you because we, we need to get you know a couple of games under our belt and then boom we're done and we can relax I believe for the rest of the season just forget about them point deduction things let's just put it concentrate on what's going to happen in our own camp uh, the other thing like I said to you I know we've got Sheffield United we've got Bluton which are going to be proper kind of heart and mouth games I believe they will be but I just believe that knowing Brentford how the way that we operate we'll end up losing the game that we don't expect to win uh the losing the game that we ex- uh, that we expect to win and then we'll end up winning the game that no one expects us to win and that's so so Brentford so maybe let's start on Saturday with Man United and let's just actually just let's, let's, let's win the game that no one really expects us to win uh in the form that we're in at the moment now Laney I'm going to ask you yeah we have to we have a school prediction I'm going to go 2-1 Brentford Oh, you nicked my score prediction, so I'm going to go even pottier than that. I'm going to go 3-2 to the mighty, mighty B, knowing that our defensive um, prowess is 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 is, 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 is to be desired as it is. But, you know, we've got an extra striker on now. It's going to have uh, Brian on the pitch now. So I'm thinking goals, 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 goals at Ooh. half-time, goals at full-time. Oh, can, can I correct myself? Oh, I, 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 I dug out Fleck and then it was Strakosha was in goal. No, oh. up there. So po- apologies to uh, Mr. Flecken. Yeah. And uh, anyone that's shouting at me now, I don't know what you're about, it's Trakosha. So uh, yeah, yeah, I got I, 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 I got it wrong. There you go. It, 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 was all, it was all his fault, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, but it doesn't change your score prediction, does it, Laney? No, it doesn't at all, no. No, no, so 2 1 and the 3 2. So we go. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway, this is the Besotted Pride of West London podcast. Thanks for, uh, well, thanks for listening. I really appreciate everybody listening out there. Like I said to you, to subscribe on all good podcast channels and buy us a beer, besotted.com. 
forward slash beer. And thank you to everyone that's bought us a beer uh, so far, which is all good. Uh, I'm going to be in Nashville in a, in a week from today, pretty much. Well. So, uh, like I said to you, so uh, you can buy us a beer out there. Actually, if you see you, we'll be watching all sorts of football out there as well. Um, but like I said to you, um, we've got the we got the Brighton game. We, we actually might just do a little mini pod before the Brighton game. So look out for that on Pride of West. Not London, but I'm Billy Grant. I'm in the house here, and we got Laney in the place. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you too. We're going to go Manchester United. We're going to be out very early. If you're going to be in Richmond, you're going to be in Kew, you're going to be in Bradford, you're going to be in Newbies. Speak them Red Devils. Come on, Newbies. Red Devils, they're going to be so devilish. We're going to beat them. Newbies. <laughs> Thank you.